Hey guys, I'm Scott with Trail Power, and today we're taking a look at a brand new product from Anchor. This is the Solix C1000 power station. Now what makes this power station special is it has 1800 watts of output power in this tiny little package. So we're going to test it and we're going to see how much power it really has and if it can really handle all of this equipment. So we moved to my mechanical room and beside me you can see my trusty Anchor 767 sitting here and on top of that is our Anchor expansion battery. Now this is better known now as the Solix F2000, uh, but on top of those we've placed our little Anchor C1000 and you can see the size difference. It's amazing how tiny this is and how light and compact and portable it is. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. Now I have my anchor sitting here because I use my anchor as my primary backup system for my home. So if we lose power, I can switch over to the anchor for my critical circuits. Now the way that I do that is through this ProTrans transfer switch. And you can see here I have 10 switches across here that covers 10 circuits in my home. And I can switch between grid power and generator power on the fly just by flipping these switches. So if I flip this switch right now, it's on grid power, I can just switch that over to generator power and now I would be running on generator power. Now, that only works if you're plugged into the anchor and this is what I use to plug into that 30 amp outlet um, that is on the front of the anchor. Now, the little C1000 doesn't have a 30 amp outlet and so we have this little adapter that allows us to plug into the standard outlets here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to grid power. We're going to plug into the C1000 and now the C1000 is powering any circuits that I turn on here and switch over to generator. And so we're going we're gonna to run a couple of them. We're going to run our refrigerator freezer and we're also going to run our microwave. So let's go ahead and switch those circuits. So I need to switch my B circuit to generator and I need to switch my H circuit to generator. Now both of those circuits are running off of this little C1000 and you can see right now we're pulling 102 watts and that is because our fridge must have kicked on. And so we'll go check on that and see how that's doing. But right now we're drawing 100 watts from our fridge and then we'll go ahead and run our microwave as well. But this shows you how cool it is to be able to take even a small power station like the C1000, hook this up to your home to be able to provide backup power in the event of an emergency or any kind of an outage. So our KitchenAid refrigerator down here is running off of our Anchor C1000 right now. So if we go ahead and open this up, you can see that it's lit up. It's right now the fridge is set to 35 degrees and the freezer is set to negative two degrees and it's holding just fine. And you, as you saw on the C1000, it's pulling right now about 96 watts uh, while this is running. And it cycles, so it'll drop down to almost zero and then it'll come back up to 100 and it might go slightly above 100 when the compressor first kicks on and then it drops back down to that around 96 watts. So this is the microwave that we switched over from grid power to backup power using our transfer switch. Now if we go ahead and open this up, you can see that the clock is on so it is getting power. And if we open it, uh, we've gone ahead and put some water in here so that we can safely test the microwave. I'm going to go ahead and start this. 
And right now we're running off that little tiny C1000 through our built-in home wiring up to this built-in microwave. So you can see how even a very small generator like the C1000 can allow you to have some real conveniences in the event of an outage. Now, if this microwave did turn on and our refrigerator turned on at the same time, we could be close on the head rudiment of that C1000, but we should still be okay. This draws about 15 to 1600 watts. Our refrigerator draws right around 95 to 100. Even if our, micro, even if our microwave or our refrigerator surged during initial load, we should be okay because we can go up to 2400 watt surge on the C1000 before it settles back into that 1800 watts continuous operation. So we're in my office now, and this is my editing setup that I use to edit my YouTube videos. It's also my workstation that I use to run my other businesses. And so the last thing I want is to have a power failure and lose all my work or corrupt a file. And so I use a UPS. And so we want to test today and see if the Anchor C1000 is a viable UPS for sensitive electronics like a computer. In my case, I'm using a Mac mini, two 27 inch monitors, external SSDs, and more accessories on top of that. And so there's a lot going on here. And I'm right now I'm drawing about 205 watts of power. Now the Anchor is currently running in uh, pass through mode. I have power to my computer coming from the anchor, and then I have power from the grid coming into the anchor. And so it's just passing that power through and not touching the batteries. That means I'm not putting any wear and tear in the batteries. I'm not using any of those 3,500 cycles that it's rated for. Um, I am just passing that power through. In the eventuality that the power does fail or goes out or there's any interruption at all, it should switch over to battery power. And if that switching in that UPS mode is fast enough, I will see no hiccups, no problems and everything will keep humming along. So we're going to go ahead and do a test. I'm working in DaVinci Resolve video editing software, fairly high load on the CPU, and I'm going, going to go ahead and do a render so we make sure the CPU is fully loaded up. So right now we're rendering. We're rendering at, rendering at about 150 frames per second. And so the CPU is well loaded. And now if I pull power from this, it will convert over to battery power and hopefully the screens don't go black. Okay, everything looks good. We're still rendering at 150 frames per second. Nothing hiccuped. Software didn't notice. And so the switching of the UPS mode on the Anchor C1000 does appear to be fast enough for sensitive electronics like my Mac Mini. So let me give you a tour of the C1000. Across the bottom, you see that there are six AC outlets, which is great. And then right above that are four USB ports. Two of those are USB-C. One of them rated at 30 watts and one of them rated at 100 watts. Next to that are two USB-A ports. And then of course there's a 12 volt power port. We tested the power port and it outputs right around 115 to 120 watts. There's a light bar here that you can turn on and it does a really good job of lighting up the room. On the end here, you'll see that there are two ports. There is an XT60 port for connecting your solar panels. And the nice thing is that's rated up to 60 volts. So you can connect a pretty large range of panels to that. And then there's also a standard AC power port, no need for charging bricks or any sort of adapters. On the other end is one of the really special features that is the expansion port that allows you to connect a second battery that stacks on top of this and doubles the capacity from one kilowatt hour to two kilowatt hours. So that pretty much wraps up our tour. Let's look at the specs. So I thought I'd share with you my requirements for a one kilowatt hour power station. If I was shopping in the market today, these would be my minimums. Now your needs may be totally different and this list may not apply to you, but it might give some, you some ideas of things to look at so that you can set your priorities and figure out what's important to you. The first thing in my list is I want it to be small and light. I want it to be under 30 pounds. Next, I set the cutoff at one kilowatt hour. There's some great power stations in the six to 700 watt range, but it's just not enough to get me through the whole day with the types of things that I need it for. I want an expansion battery capability. I wanna be able to put on another battery that doubles the capacity so that if I need to work all day or all weekend with my power tools, I can do that. Next, I want 1800 kilowatts of output minimum. I tested a power station recently that had 1200 watts of output power 
great little power station, but it just can't get you over the hump of being able to run power tools or being able to run a refrigerator. It just won't do it. It has to have USB-C with 100 watt output. I want to be able to plug in a MacBook Pro or another laptop and be able to charge those and work all day and have them fast charge at 100 watts. I want LFP batteries. I want to have the charge cycles that come with LFP batteries. Being able to charge 3,000 times plus is, is awesome so that I can use this every day and not worry about using up the battery. Then I want to have fast AC charging. Under an hour is ideal. Being able to be out on the job site and work all day and then bring this home and plug it in at lunch and, and recharge it and fill it up for the rest of the day is awesome. Then using it in UPS mode. I want 20 millisecond UPS. I use my power stations as a UPS for my computer. I want to be able to plug my computer into it and know that if I lose power, that the battery is going to kick in and take over and I'm not going to lose my work. And 20 milliseconds seems to be the cutoff for what my computer's like. Next, solar charging. I want to have at least 500 watts of solar input. Being able to hook up 500 watts of solar will allow me to run indefinitely with a one kilowatt power station. Next, I want app support with Wi-Fi. I love my Solix F2000, but it only has Bluetooth support. Being able to have Wi-Fi support, I realize now is super handy because that means that I can monitor that power station and be able to turn on the AC on and off and those types of things from anywhere. Next, I want to have a five-year warranty on this. If I'm going to spend this kind of money on a power station, I want to know that the company who manufactured it stands behind it and believes in their product. And lastly, I have a budget of $1,000 for a one kilowatt hour power station. So here's how the Anchor Solix C1000 stacks up. It comes in at 26.5 pounds, which is great. That's well under the 30, that was our cutoff. Next, it does have one kilowatt hour of battery capacity and it's expandable to two kilowatt hours. We showed you that expansion port and that's awesome that you can add a second battery to that and be able to double the capacity when you're in a fixed location. Next, it does have that 1800 watts of output and it has 2400 watts of surge, which allows us to be able to pluck in high load items like refrigerators and saws and things like that and have some surge capacity but it has that 1800 watt continuous operation, which is awesome. Next, it does charge from zero to 100% in 58 minutes. Uh, that's incredible. You can adjust that charging speed and so you can charge it slower and the fans won't be as loud and also it does uh, treat the batteries a little kinder. But if you're in a situation like you need to charge this thing up during your lunch hour, you can plug it in and know that in less than an hour, it's gonna charge 100% in like it says, 58 minutes. Next, it does have that 20 millisecond UPS capability, which is awesome. And then it has 600 watts of solar input. That's 100 watts more than our requirement. And so we can actually hook up a wide range of panels to that. And as we mentioned, you can hook up up to 60 volt solar panels. So I can hook up these big commercial solar panels to it. And that is awesome. All right, next it has Wi-Fi app support. And I love this because being able to monitor this from anywhere and being able to control it anywhere that has a Wi-Fi connection is perfect. It has that five-year warranty we're looking for, and it does come in at that $999 price point. And I think we can even do better than that for you at the time of this video. So stay tuned for a special offer there. Hey, so I thought it would be valuable to take a look at the C1000 compared to the competition and see how it ranks. The closest competitors are from EcoFlow and Blue Eddy. So let's take a look. So the closest competitor from EcoFlow is the Delta II. Coming in at 27 pounds, it's a pound heavier than the Anchor, but it's still underneath our 30 pound threshold. It does have a kilowatt of battery capacity and it is expandable to three kilowatt hours. It has 1800 watts of output power. The charging does take longer, 58 minutes for the Anchor and 80 minutes for the Delta II. The UPS mode is 30 milliseconds on the EcoFlow Delta II and back to the 20 milliseconds on the Anchor. That 10 milliseconds may not sound like much, but that may be enough to make your sensitive electronics shut down. It, I would be very careful in testing that to see how that works with in, as a UPS for your equipment. Uh, it does have 500 watts of solar input, so it just squeaks into our, our cutoff um, compared to the Anchor 600 watts. So 
Anchor has about 20, 25% higher uh, solar input. Uh, it does have app support with Wi-Fi. It does have a five-year warranty and it does have a $999 MSRP. Now let's take a look at the Blue Eddy. The Blue Eddy AC180, who it's quite a bit heavier at 37 pounds compared to the 26 pounds from Anchor. Uh, it does have 1.1 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Uh, it does not have an expansion option. Now I say here real expansion option because Blue Eddy does kind of talk about having expandability with their other batteries, but that's just running it in through a 12 foot, 12 volt port as if it were like a solar panel, but it doesn't work two ways. You can't monitor the, the uh, state of charge of those batteries through the app and you can't charge those batteries. You have to charge those batteries separately. So it's not a true expansion option. Um, it does have 1800 watts of output power, which is great. Uh, it does take 1.3 to 1.8 hours to fully charge from zero to 100 compared to the 58 minutes for the anchor. So that's a big difference. It does have 20 millisecond UPS capability. It also has that 500 watt solar input versus the 600 in the anchor. It does have app support with Wi-Fi. It does have a five year warranty and it does hit that $999 price point. I went ahead and created a chart that shows all of the capabilities of these three side by side. So you can see the anchor Solex C1000 next to the Blue Eddy AC180 and the EcoFlow Delta II. Now, different things may be important in here for you. So you may choose a different power station based on your needs. But the, the items in green are the best of the three. And the items in red mean that they did not meet our minimum requirements. So what's my bottom line on the C1000? You know, I hate to overuse the term game changer, but I think it really applies in this case. Today, when I go out to the job site, I take my Solex F2000 with me almost every day because I need to be able to run my power tools, weld, shop vacs, things like that. Um, in a lot of cases, I'm probably just going to be taking this because a lot of times I just need to go and do something quick and do a quick cleanup or whatever. And I don't want to disconnect my F2000 from my house, which is providing my backup power here. And so this is probably my new go-to whenever I need to just go out and about and, and work remotely. And being able to expand this with a two kilowatt hour battery will uh, give me the capability to be able to run this all day. So I'm really excited that that's coming out around, I think, December timeframe. So we'll look forward to hopefully testing that for you and, uh, and giving you some feedback on that as well. Awesome little package. And the one thing I will say is that uh, if you run this thing at full charging speed, the fans can get a little noisy. The F2000 is known for being silent, but it's a much bigger unit. They had to squeeze a lot more cooling into a very compact package. And so if you, if you run this thing at high watt output, or if you're charging this full speed, the fans will spool up and you will hear those and they can be a little hair dryerish at full speed. But under normal loads and like a 200 watt load running my computer system, you don't hear it at all. Um, or if you're running a, even a 400 watt load, you can barely hear it. If you get up to about 600 watts, you can start to hear the fans kick on. And if you go up over, you know, 1,000, 1,400 watts, they'll kick on pretty good to make sure that those batteries are protected. Other than that, I can't even, I was just, I tell you that because I was trying to think of something to, to whine about because I don't want to tell you just the good stuff, but besides some fan noise uh, under high load, it's just been all good stuff. It's just worked. It's just been a solid performer. I'm really excited about it and I'm really ex excited to add this to my fleet and I will be using this every day. So thank you guys for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And if you want to get an Anchor Solix C1000 yourself, there are some codes below that will give you special trail power pricing. We thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon.